morning. Hey, it's Ian from RTO here. Uh, welcome you to another week. Uh, hope we will have a good weekend. Uh, despite it being extremely hot. Um, so today we're starting with uh, one of my uh, PR Guru's favourite bands, Queens of the Stone Age, or affectionately known as QOTSA. Um, they're an American rock band that were formed in 1996. Uh, they're all from around the Palm Desert area of California. The band was founded by the vocalist and guitarist Josh Holm. Now, one thing when I was doing some uh, research into this, they've had so many change up, changes in the lineup. Um, it's never consistent, so. I'm not even going to attempt. They've had about 12, 13 musicians play on all their albums and they've never been the same until later on. Um, so we've got seven albums to go through. Uh, once again, this is my personal choice. Um, if you disagree with me, and I don't mind that, put your um, preference in the um, comments box and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Some of you have, we're now up to 19, so if you've subscribed recently, welcome on board and um, hope you enjoy what we put out. So let's get cracking on the first one of the week. Okay then, coming in at number 7 is the fifth album released in 2007-ish, I think, uh, El Vulgaris. Um, all these albums are pretty good, uh, but some of them have got tracks I'm not keen on and that's how I'll rank them. Um, it's difficult because they're, they're very, a very um, solid band, um, very persistent and consistent even. Right, so the first track on uh, this album is called Turning on the Screw. This has got quite a very weird riff. It's all over the place, the drums are all over the place, but for some reason, and don't know how, ask me why, it all works. It's a really good track. Uh, second track, Sick, Sick, Sick. This is a good solid track from uh, QOTSA. -O uh, um, does what it says. Incredible track, very good riffs. Uh, the number the third track I'm a designer Do you know this band are so amazing that they make a song that is totally disjointed in the ears it's all over the shop again but they make it sound brilliant I don't know what they do but they've got this incredible knack so it, it is a quite a good track uh, Into the Hollow uh, love the riff in this it's got this whining guitar solo it's a great great track Misfit Love, this is a great track again, uh, it's got a fuzzy effect guitar, the drums are really good on this and it's the best track on the album, I really enjoy that one, uh, it's, a, it's a, what they call the classic sound of Queens of the Stone Age, absolutely brilliant. Then we get Battery Acid, uh, solid track again, you can't go wrong, very solid. Uh, then we got Make It Twitch Wit Chew. This is a slower track from the band. Uh, it's very enjoyable though. It's got some nice little pieces in it. Nice little guitar. Nice vocal as well. Then we get threes and sevens. I'm not a fan of this. In places the vocal actually sounds out of key and it sort of just it just doesn't do anything for me. Suture Up Your Future, this is a great track. Uh, back to the uh, that great sound. Uh, then we get R River in the Road. This is too, even too just jointed for me. It doesn't make no sense. Uh, then we get Rum Pig Run. Again, not the best track on the album. Uh, it's a bit of a mix up and down um, this album in my eyes but it still gets an RTO ranking of 6.5 because the tracks that are good on it are really really good. 
Okay then, coming in at number six is the 2000 album, their second studio album, Rated R. Again, this has got some mixed tracks on it. 90% uh, of the album's pretty good. Uh, first track, Feel Good Hit of the Summer. I'd call this a good old-fashioned punk song. Absolutely brilliant. 2 minutes 43, good good length for a punky song. Then we get the Lost Art of Keeping a Secret, another really good track. I do love the uh, riffs in this. Um, really catchy tune, really, really good. Then you get a strange title, Leg of Lamb. Weird arrangement though, and it still comes out as a really good track. Then we get Autopilot. Uh, this is one of my favourite tracks on the album. Uh, uh, the lead guitar is solid and it's got an acoustic rhythm guitar. Really, really good. Uh, then Better Living Through Chemistry. Another solid track. Uh, for a long track, it is pretty good. Um, then we get Monsters in the Parasol. Great rocker this is. The riffs are driving. Absolutely corker. Then we get quick and to the pointless. This is 1 minute 42. The riffs are good, but I do not understand why people have to shout. If you can sing, sing, don't shout, because you, it ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. You can't understand what you're saying. It just doesn't do anything to me. And the next track's really good, it's called Into the Fade. Into the Fade. And it includes a reprise of Feel Good Hit of the Summer. It's lovely how it slips back into it. Really, really clever, really, really good. Then Tension Head. Cool, this riff, so is Black Sabbath, it's unbelievable. But what ruins it is the shouting vocal. I didn't understand a word he was saying. I put it on the headphones and I still couldn't make out. But then we get an instrumental called Lightning Song. This is really mellow. This is as mellow as you get. And uh, I do like it. It's very um, relaxing. The last track on the album, I Think I Lost My Headache. Solid track. Really driving riffs on this. Terrific, terrific song. On the whole, as I said, it's a good album. There's a couple of... If it weren't for the shouting on some of the tracks, I think I'd have ranked it a little bit higher. But it still gets a RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. It's just a solid performance. Okay then, coming in at number 5. Now it's an album we've already been featured on one of the shows, but that was in the Stinker album covers, so I think you know what's coming up. It's a debut album. From 1998, Queens of the Stone Age. Again, look at that cover. It's just, oh, I hate that cover. But the album is pretty damn good. First track on the album is Regular John. This has got some really good riffs. That lead driving guitar in this is an absolute belter. Really solid track. Then Avon Home. No, I know that's who wrote it. <laughs> Avon home, what am I thinking? Avon, uh, storming riff. Absolutely cracking, really he heavy. Uh, then we get If Only, uh, another good track. Uh, it's a solid post-punk era sort of music, really good. Then we get a track called uh, Walking on the Sidewalks. This is very heavy metal, without being heavy metal, if you get my drift. It's a really good track. Uh, let me get You Would Know, it's alright. Not my favourite track off the album. And then How To Handle A Rope, great riffs in this. Terrific riffing. Uh, Mexicola, this is my favourite track. It's The bass line in this is really heavy. The riff drives round it and it, it just makes it a fantastic track. Then we get Hispanic Impressions. This is another 
stonking uh, trap. The drumming though is totally off the cuff. It doesn't fit round the song when you first listen to it, but everyone else seems to get round it and make it into a great song. I just don't know how this band do it. Then you, then you next one is you can't quit me, baby. Very, very solid track. Really good. Then we get give the mule what he wants. God, the mean bass line on this. There's a lot of good heavy bass lines on this. The lead guitar really good, and the driving riff that goes with it terrific. Then we get spiders and vinegar runes. Uh, I'd say this is a bit of a filler track, it's not inspiring at all. Uh, then the last track, I was a teenage and model, god this is dull as you like. I, I never get all the way through it, it just irritates me. But as a debut album, it's pretty good, uh, it's starting to establish a different sound uh, and it gets an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay, coming in at number four is the fourth album, uh, 2005, Lullabies to Paralyze. Again, a really good, really good album. Uh, they're starting to get a bit more, uh, a little bit commercial, commercial, uh, but it's really, really good. Uh, first track is a little ditty, a little lullaby. Uh, called This Lullaby. Uh, it's just guitar. Really, really good. Then we get Medication. This is a short rocker, just under two minutes. Everything you want about a good rock song. Uh, then we get Everybody Knows uh, That You're Insane. One of their best ever tracks. The vocal in this and the so -go solo are absolutely brilliant. One of my favourite tracks of all time by the band. Uh, then we get Tangled Up in a Plaid. I think that's what it says. And again, this is one of them really strange arrangements that works. I mean, it, I know I've talked about jazz where there's six musical instruments all playing different tunes. This is quite like that, but for this it just seems to work. I don't know what they do, but it really is good. Then we get Burn the Witch. I love this track. It's got a catchy hook and it gets in your head. Really good track. Then In My Head. Uh, the vocal on this is superb. One of the best vocal performances from the band. It really is good. Uh, then we get Little Sister. This is a very post-punk song. I do like it. It reminds me of, a, of Ultravox when they first started. Really good. Uh, then someone's in the wolf. Right. This song, seven minutes fifteen. It's just, it's a good song, but it's just far too long. Uh, it's a bit repetitive, and it just loses itself. It's a shame because it, it is a really good song. It's like the next track, the blood is love. Too long. Um, if. You, if you're going to do long tracks, make it a little bit interesting, but this song is not interesting enough to, to justify six and a half minutes. I do like the start of it, and then it just sort of fades into no nothing. Uh, then we get a track called Skin on Skin. Great opening riff, really grungy, uh, and a great solo. That is playing a totally different tune, but somehow works. Terrific. Then we get Broken Box, killer track. Best um, bass line I've heard in ages. Really gives it some. <laughs> uh, then we get uh, You Got a Killer Scene There, man. Solid track, very, very good. Uh, and it ends up with Long Slow Goodbye. Uh, it's 5 minutes 16, but for a longer track they actually give it some more feeling, more atmosphere, and it, and it actually works on this track. Um, apart from the tracks that were too long, um, it still gets an RTO rating of 8 out of 10, because it is solid from top to bottom. 
I don't dislike any of the tracks, but I just find them two tracks a little bit too long. Okay then, coming in at number three is the sixth album, released in 2013, Like Clockwork. Again, this is different. Uh, they self-produced this one, and it does sound pretty good. Okay, first track is Keep Your Eyes Peeled. It's okay again, but it, the bass line is terrific, but the track is too a little bit too long again. You, you know, you can't do a song that's 100 miles an hour for five minutes. You've got to change the tempo a little bit. This would have been better as a three and a half minute song, because it is a great song, just a bit too long. Um, I Sat By The Ocean, nice track this is, it's really nice, All the guitar work all round is fantastic. Then we get The Vampire of Time and Memory, this is a bit dull, it just lacks some beef, it needs something a bit more oomph and that would be a great track but as it stands it, it just doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. Then we have If I Had A Tail, uh, the solo makes this because if it weren't for the solo it'd be a pretty average song uh, my god my god is the sun awesome this rocks to the rocks you to the bone uh, it's one of my favorite tracks really really solid track then we get collapse here uh, another solid track uh, it's got some piano on this and it really adds to it then we get fair weather friends uh, Great solo, but what makes this track is the keyboards in it. They're starting to introduce a bit of keyboard here and there, and it works, and it really is good. Then we get another long track, I Appear Missing, but this is okay because it builds up. It starts off slow, and then it gives that them tracks that keep building and building, and little bits of layers, and it is a really good track, and you don't realise it's six minutes long. It's like the title track, the next track, Like Clockwork. Uh, again, a longer track, but it's got some atmosphere. It, it's got something behind it, and it moves very nicely. It flows. But on the whole, this is a fantastic album. Um, and I give it um, RTO's ranking of 8.5. Absolutely stunning album. Okay, then. We come to the top two. As usual, these are hard to split up because they are two absolute belter albums and you'll be surprised what swung it this time nothing to do with the tracks itself but it's something to do with the tracks or will be revealed so coming in at number two which will probably be a shock to a lot of people uh, and it's a lot of people's favourite album it's the third album from 2002 Songs for the Deaf this is a solid album. It's It's been a firm favourite of mine for a long, long time. It is really good. Uh, your first bit you get is like a intro on the radio and that. It's quite nice. It gives you some feel. Then the first actual track is called You Think I Ain't Worth a Dollar But I Feel Like a Millionaire. Uh, good solid rocker here. But what spoils it is them shouting lyrics again. Don't shout, you can sing. No need to, it just spoils it. Then we get the classic, No One Knows. Yeah, I don't have to tell you too much about that one. It's a very big hit. But it is a good song, really good song. Then we get First It Giveth. It's got a great bass line in this. Drums are brilliant, fantastic riff then we get song for the dead uh very good song even though it's a long song again the stack that you know they've actually put some feel into it and it moves a nice nicely along then we get the sky is falling for a long song this is probably one of the best ones i've ever done because it's really good it's got some nice runs in it nice guitar riffs nice drumming and it adds, it keeps building and it falls away, builds. It's a really good track. Then we get Shit, 
nearly said. <laughs> it's because it is a six shooter. Uh, it's got some great riffs, but the vocals are just diabolical. That's why I nearly said something else. Um, then we get the Hanging Tree, another solid track. Really love that track. Really, really great song. Uh, it's got some nice uh, guitar work in that. And then we get Go With The Flow. Great guitar effects on this. This actually reminds me of early Muse. And I mean early Muse. It's before Showbiz came out. When they had the EPs. About that same time. So it's a really good track. And that's I think why I love this track. Because it does remind me of Muse. Then we got Gonna Leave You. This is a great rocker. It's one of them that gets your feet tapping. Then we get Do It Again. Now this is another one that sounds a little bit like Muse. It's got some, I think, I don't know if Muse stole this because it sounds a bit like um, Uprising in Places. Really, really good track though. This is, because this obviously came out long before Uprising. Uh, then we get God is Ra in the Radio. Oh, I love this. It's got great piano, it's got a great riff, it's, and then you've got um, the bass again, he's absolutely unbelievable, really good um, song. Then another favourite on the album, another love song, a great song. This is very much in the vein of Squeeze, Is That Love. Another That was a great song, this is a great song. And the last track on the album, Song for the Deaf, this is a very, very clever um, track because it contains a hidden outtake version of Feel Good Hit of the Summer. But they replace the lyrics with laughter. But the way it comes into the track and how it intermixes is superb. Great bit of forward thinking there, really good. So on the whole, it's, it's a solid album. I love it to bits and it gets a... RTO ranking of 9 out of 10. So my favourite album by Queens of the Stone Age is their current album released on two, August the 25th 2017 Villains and the reason I think this is this is number one is the production produced by Mark Ronson he's just took this band to another level and I hope their next album is as good as this because he, he, he just took them up they were always been very very good but he's taken them up a little not a notch more this is a terrific album um, I love it the from the first minute I put it on I thought door oh, this is good um, I brought this just before I went on a holiday 2017 and I do believe that would have been um, Dominican Republic because I got caught up in Hurricane Irma um, everything was all right it was just a very windy and wet day um, so I I listened to this quite a lot I listened to it on the plane going over and I just fell in love with it it was actually the first album and a proper lineup as well uh, You've got Josh Home on lead vocals, Troy Van Leeuwen on guitars, Dean Fratera on keys, and Michael Schumann on bass, and John Theodore on drums. First solid proper lineup. He has actually the others does it, the when you go through the notes, he hasn't got no lineup as such. There's about fifty thousand musicians, but this one actually says personnel. Dun, 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 and I thought, wow, but it is a good album. So let's go through the tracks. Feet Don't Fail Me, great awesome rocker to start the album, absolutely, the production is just fantastic, it's 5 minutes 41, but with a good producer, you, they know exactly what they want, I mean I don't particularly like Mark Ronson's other stuff and that, but he did a damn good job on this, um, the way you used to, this is a stormer, it reminds me at the beginning so much of T-Rex, really really good uh, track then we get domesticated animals 
the drumming in this is superb. The drumming is so much better on this album than all the others. The, the, some of the drumming on the other was a little bit tinny in places, but this is very heavy, and they've got the sound, that crisp drum sound, which makes these tracks so great. Uh, then we get Fortress, solid rocker this is. Got some really nice riffs, and they're so clear now. The production is great. Then we get Head Like a Haunted House. This is very punky. Um, this is one of them tracks that's actually got some screamy vocals in it. But what makes this okay, you can hear what they're saying. So, again, I think it's all to do with production. Then we get Unraw, Re Unreborn again. Another great song. This has actually got strings, harmonies, solid as you like. Just like Hideaway, another solid track, really good vocal, uh, nice guitar work, and the arrangement is great. Then we got The Evil Has Landed. This is hard, heavy, and everything is crystal clear. It's a great rock track. I'd like uh, Mark Ronson to go back in the studio with some of the earlier albums and remix them, because I think they might actually sound even better than what they are. And the last track is Victims of Circumstance. It's actually the weakest track on the album, but it's still a great track. Um, so this easily gets a 9.5 out of RTO ranking of 9.5 out of 10. It's not very often I always I rank the, the latest album of a band as my favourite, but in this instance it is, because it is. I was debating if it was going to be this or um, Songs for the Deafs, but I listened to them both one after the other and I thought, no, it's definitely villains. So that's one for for the books, another one done. Uh, got another show in the, it's a new series of we're doing now, um, and you'll love the album we're doing. It's one of my favourite albums of all time. It's not even a rock album. So if you want to see what it is, watch the video. Um, I'll be back for that later. If not, if you're not going to watch that one, um, I'll see you all tomorrow where we've got Pagan's Mind. So I'll take care for now and I'll see you soon.